Tonight here at 10 o'clock, fake emergency calls, large law enforcement response. Agencies across the state continue to tackle what is known as swatting. From schools to hospitals to stores and even in some cases apartment buildings. These calls unfortunately though come in from untraceable numbers usually through the internet. And as the cases grow, KWWL's Emily Moss takes a closer look at how local police and schools are trying to tackle the issue. It all starts with the phone call. The phone caller issues a threat or a warning and it prompts a massive response from local to state and federal agencies to other first responders. But it's not a real threat. It's a swatting call. Our response is our response until we can figure out it's not a true incident. We don't stand down until then. Swatting is defined as making a prank call to emergency services. Could be an active shooter at a school or a business. It could be a hostage situation. It could be a bomb threat. It exhausts local law enforcement like Cedar Rapids PD. When we get these swatting calls, it not only packs us, but other law enforcement agencies in the area, the fire department and our ambulance service. And then that causes disruption in the service to the rest of the city because we still have a, another whole part of the city to police and we're putting a lot of assets on one call. Swatting can happen to anyone, anytime, or anywhere. The Iowa Department of Public Safety investigated 39 swatting events last year. For the Cedar Rapids School District, they've had four swatting calls so far this school year. And it's not always anonymous or overseas calls. An investigation brought them here to Harding Middle School, where they arrested a 13-year-old student. Anytime uh, a student is in a classroom and a teacher is in a classroom and they get that announcement that they need to go into lockdown, that's a pretty scary moment. Janessa Carr is the Safe and Secure Learning Environment Coordinator for the Cedar Rapids School District. She's the one who gets the call from police that there's been a threat made to a school. We uh, have to go through the protocol. We have to um, send police officers into the building. They have to verify that it's safe. Um, but typically, pretty quickly, we know that it's a swatting call. Carr says the problem isn't only impacting the state. This has been a trend for some time, and it's also important for the community to know that this is like a national trend. It is not unique to Iowa. This is happening everywhere. And it's really a blend of kids and um, like things, international calls as well. But parents can help. There's a lot of things that kids do that they think is funny and that they think it's a joke without understanding what they're doing. So it's just really important for us to, uh, to explain to kids what swatting is why it's, um, and why it's so serious. For Cedar Rapids Police and Cedar Rapids Schools, there's one clear question, why? What is the goal? What's the end goal? Um, and how can we get you help? We can put all the tools in place to enhance the penalties, but we still need the tools to figure out who's doing it. And at the end of the day, we really just want to stop it. Just this spring, Governor Reynolds signed a new law making swatting a felony, punishable to up to five years in prison, 10 if somebody gets hurt from it. In Cedar Rapids, Emily Moss, News 7, KWWL. All right, thanks, Emily. And this fall, the Cedar Rapids School District will begin using a new program called Crisis Go, and it'll send push alerts to parents anytime there's a lockdown. Now, the district is hoping that this will help with parents and families, student and staff clarity and more transparency as the district and police investigate threats, whether they're swatting or something else, that come to the Cedar Rapids Community School District.